All right, I had that Anthem STR powering my living room audio for a little while now. Let's give it kind of a formal impressions and review. All right, so in this video, I'm gonna talk about the STR. I'm gonna talk about how I've got it set up in my system, what other devices and stuff it's kind of playing with, give some thoughts about the things that I like and some of the things that I think could be improved and we'll go over a whole bunch of settings. So make sure you stay to the end if you wanna see kind of a full breakdown of the options and settings and capabilities and such of the device. So with regards to my setup, I was able to procure this Anthem STR uh, some weeks ago. I have a living room 2.2 setup. There's two, a pair of in-wall Triad 1000 series IW LCR6 speakers and a pair of Triad in-wall uh, bronze subwoofers. The subwoofers are amplified by a pair, uh, one each, of Triad Rack Amp 300 uh, rack amplifiers. And the Focal are driven off of channels from a pair of Parasound A52 Pluses. One, of the A52, one channel of one of the A52s goes to the left, one channel of one of the A52s goes to the right. So it's that Focal, Parasound, Anthem, what I would call a trifecta of awesomeness that I really liked in my home theater and then I deployed to my living room. So I was looking for some more higher end processing in that room. I was looking for a way to bring quality equalization to the living room and it just so happened that the opportunity to get a hold of one of these Anthem STRs, I bought it used from another kind of qualified member on ABS forum um, at, an, at a really nice price. Do keep in mind this thing's like $4,300 I think MSRP and some little birdies I have seen mention that the price of Anthem gear and this model may be going up. This thing might be five grand or so by summer. So if you're thinking about getting one, you might wanna go ahead and move on that sooner than later. Um, I should also mention that I'm not really using a wide array of the inputs. So for the living room setup that I'm using it with, I have currently right now my source is going directly into the television. That's an LG G2 and then I'm taking optical out from the TV over a 40-ish foot long cable that runs through the walls down to my rack and plugs in to an optical input on the STR. As I make this video right now, that's the only audio input on the STR that I'm making use of. So I don't have vinyl, I don't have turntables, I'm not using the phono inputs, or I'm not using any of the XLR inputs. Coming out of the STR. I just have RCA. I'm using the RCA pre-outs. Of course, four of them, two for the speakers and two for the subwoofers. Uh, RCA out of the sub pre-outs into the two triad rack amps and then RCA to XLR, the connection from the STR to the pair of sounds. So one thing I'll say off the bat that has just made me completely elated with buying this is in the very short time that I've owned it, Anthem has spun out firmware updates and capability updates to this model that basically brings it in functionality line with the newer MRX and AVM models and the latest versions and such of Arc Genesis, which means that this thing now supports subwoofer phase integration, automatic measurement and calculation. It supports uh, speaker delay calculation and that measurement and calculation. So all of the really awesome cutting edge stuff that's going into Anthem Arc and into the Anthem platform for these devices that's really kind of being deployed again with the MRX and the AVM models has been also now deployed to the STR. Specifically, they make specific notes in the firmware updates or in the Genesis updates that the STR is at parity with the other devices. And that was one of the concerns that I had for it <clears throat> when I bought it is I, I really want all of those, I really wanted all of those features. I was crossing fingers hoping that they were going to come because I think having them integrated into the EQ and, and into the device just makes it, the results, the audio results so much better and so much easier by, by letting a real high-end, real capable and reliable EQ system, you know, do all of that stuff for the room setup and being able to just trust it to, to have, you know, essentially have good results. So super great on that. The firmware on the device right now is 1.8.30. That's the one that introduced those features. Right now, the, the latest version of Arc Genesis, I had been running the beta on the 1.6.9 release, which has already actually been updated to 1.6.10, and, and I think we'll be seeing the production version 
of these capabilities and these features rolled out hopefully pretty soon. In terms of sound quality, my measurements and my objective qualification of the audio comes from measuring and using and letting Anthem Arc do its thing. I'm not taking additional measurements and, and such outside of that, but I will say that my living room, quite honestly, has never sounded better. From the upgrades that I did into those Focal speakers, the pair of sound amps, and now this STR, that stuff comes together so well. Music sounds awesome. Dialogue clarity watching a TV show or watching a movie is great. Game audio when I crank it up as well. Just very thorough, very detailed, just sublime. I could throw out a whole bunch of kind of hyperbole, but suffice to say, I really, really, really enjoy the sound of my living room. And I love the fact that I was able to accomplish that with the nice integrated in-wall system and style. I think having the 2.2 system in there is fantastic. Phantom Center works amazingly. I have a very wide couch and I do sit, we do sit to the edges, to the outsides of that couch. My wife often sits kind of in the left-hand corner and I'll lay down or I'll sit maybe sometimes over to the far right. Sometimes I will sit in the seat sweet spot very squared up to the television. But quite honestly, even being out to the side, voices, dialogue, all of that stuff, just centered, anchored to the TV. And we play a lot of music through the house. We generally do it through that zone. And I've just been completely enamored with everything that I've heard after Cal. I, I ran that room for a long time with some other speakers and without equalization. And very, very, very definitively, this is better. Just a significant, significant improvement, as you would hope with that level of equipment, right? That's not an inexpensive audio system relative to the speakers, the processor itself, and then the amplification that goes with it. But I would very, very strongly recommend this device based on my experience with it and its performance, and particularly you know, in conjunction with what I have it integrated with. So a couple things that I'll comment on that are kind of dislikes, or I think there's room for improvement. One is amongst the plethora of inputs that this thing has for audio, the one thing that it doesn't have is an HDMI input. I really wish that this had an HDMI ARC eARC type of port on it, it so that I would have the option of taking some sources through the television and then coming, coming back out the HDMI eARC down to here. Obviously that enables the ability to send more larger bandwidth types of audio signals and such down than the optical does, but it's not really that much of a limitation. Honestly, for most of the devices that I have running and living right now, I need all of those, I need all four of those HDMI ports for sources anyway, so I can't really sacrifice the eARC port. It's a two-channel setup, and over optical, you can have two-channel PCM, which is a lossless signal, and so I'm really not losing anything in terms of audio quality as it is, but still, I think for versatility and for the sake of completeness, HDMI port, just one HDMI eARC port on that, on that unit would be really nice to have. The other thing that I was surprised to find out, and I didn't realize this before I bought it, when I first plugged it in, I hooked it up on my network, I, I got its IP address set, and I went to go in my web browser just expecting to access the, the same awesome type of web UI and web server that's available on the MRX and the ABM models, and it's not there. It doesn't resolve. This, the STR came out earlier than those MRX and AVMs. And I think so because it came out earlier, it just lacked that feature. I don't know if they didn't have it ready, they didn't develop it at all for this unit, doesn't have the right hardware capabilities. I don't know what the limitation is, but it's not there. And I find that to be a bummer. I love having that web UI access to the AVM 70. I think it looks awesome. I think it works awesome. And I'm particularly removed from my equipment. I'm sitting in the living room, all of my gear is down here in the basement. I don't see the front displays in either of my spaces on these devices, so I don't have that feedback. I don't have that information about what it's doing, what signal it's getting, what volume level I'm at, any of that stuff. So I really appreciate having the web UI, and it's not there. Um, I don't know if that's something that they could still add in a firmware update or not, but in any case, just FYI, not there. What they do have is kind of like legacy mobile apps. So the app is available, it runs on iPhone and iPad, and that would give me some of that removed room feedback at least to see like what the device is doing, what volume is it at, change some stuff like that. But I've been very unsuccessful in having that app actually connect and work reliably. And I think there's, I've seen other feedback in the app reviews and stuff 
that it's really not great. I think the latest firmware had some changes that was supposed to restore the operational access to that app. But for, for me, I don't know, it just hasn't, it hasn't really worked. So bummer there. Um, I wish they, again, I wish there would be just some kind of remote access to get on, get to the device and see what's happening with it and, and what it's doing. And that might also be something part and parcel of my setup. One thing that I found as kind of a failure mode, a really interesting failure mode, is that so far when I've ran my ARC calibrations on the STR, the ARC Genesis software won't connect to the SDR if my EA5 Control 4 controller is on. So obviously there's some interaction there that's kind of like present, pre preventing another connection over the network from being made. Maybe that's why the app isn't working for me. I can't run the app and have Control 4 kind of pinging and interacting with the STR at the same time. Maybe I'll try that and, and, and fiddle around with the app a little bit more. But suffice to say, I don't know, it's been a little bit of a pain and, and it's a limitation for me. I don't know, depending on your setup and, and your equipment integration, it might be an, an issue for you as well. Yeah, so that's, that's really um, it in terms of dislikes. All right, so let's take a look here through the settings and options and capabilities and such that are available on the STR unit itself. Again, you have to do this on the unit. There's no web UI option like with the MRX and AVM models. General face, you can see I'm on my living input. I have an arc cal loaded, profile loaded, minus 45 on my volume. Currently getting a PCM input, stereo input, because I'm hooked up to the Apple TV at the moment. If I hit the menu button, I can go to kind of this quick menu option here where I can adjust levels and modes, but what we want to look at is the more detailed setup. So one of the things I like about the on-device um, Anthem interface is it does tell you how many controls are on a given screen or option. So we see here we're on number one of 10. So that means on this view, there's 10 different configuration uh, elements and we're currently sitting on the first one. So if we look at speaker setup, uh, uh, the first several of these configuration options are really driven by ARC. And so you would really kind of set them up in your ARC profile, or your ARC measurement, and then download them to the, to the device rather than kind of mucking with them on the unit itself. And similar to the MRX and AVMs, we have four profiles here. If you want to make different types of setups or different types of configurations or response curves for different content, you know, a lot of flexibility there. I'm only using one. I called it main. So we can see that one is the one that's kind of selected and that's the one we're going to look at. Profile 234 for me are right now anyway unused. So in the speaker edit, again, here's the name of the profile and there's an option to control your subwoofer config. I have my subwoofer set up for two, two subwoofers in stereo. You can turn your subwoofers off or you can put them in mono modes. Under bass management, this is also driven by ARC. So if I look at the main, I've got an 80 hertz crossover set that was calculated and applied from the ARC measurement sub-polarity both set to normal and I have sub phases there of 85 and 60 for the left and the right again also measured calculated and applied by Arc Genesis awesome awesome feature that this does this now with the STR listener position also driven by the profiles main here this is basic basically looks like distance it's it's speaker subwoofer delay and again also driven by Arc measured in the measurement, calculated and applied. Really, really cool that that's available as well. Trim levels and level calibration also set by ARC. And we can kind of see what it did here with my subs and my mains. A couple of minus one-ish dB uh, trim on the subwoofers and about a plus eight dB trim on the mains. That's pretty uh, parallel to what I see in the theater for the same Focal speakers. Going down, now is where we get into some of the things that are not really driven by ARC. Input setup here. I love the input structure of these Anthem devices. You basically get like 30 virtual inputs and you can tweak and adjust and set, you know, same devices or same source inputs, but different profiles for different uh, virtual inputs. All of this configuration, flexibility and stuff, it's really cool. For me right now, I have just one virtual input. I call it my living room. Name living room. As I mentioned, I'm using that optical one input jack. It's set to use ARC in that main ARC profile. And that's it, basically. Most of the other stuff here that's grayed out has to do if you're using the phono inputs or some of the other specialized inputs of the device. But here is also where you would do this input management. You can see I can add, insert, or delete. And I can also set up a home theater bypass 
I'm not using that right now. I have no, I have, I'm not using my STR and my AVM70 together in a bypass mode for the same zone. They're serving different zones discreetly. Analog input levels, more option here to adjust uh, trims on, on a per input basis. I don't use these inputs and they're all just kind of defaulted to zero. Preferences is where we start to set up some operational characteristics of the unit. Let's get to the top. We can set an auto off time, 5, 10, 20 minutes, up to an hour. We can control the display brightness when the unit first turns on and what brightness it maintains. Displayed info, all versus just the volume if you want to control how much information is shown on the front of the unit. Mute level, I just set mine to fully muted. Max volume, which generally you want to kind of set on an audio processor like this so somebody doesn't sit on the remote and jack up, jack up the volume and blow out your speakers. So I've got mine set to minus 10. Power on volume for me, minus 45. I, found, I find that my system in the living room is plenty loud, particularly with this setup at what's, what is very, very quiet represented volumes. So um, we power on at minus 45. For some things, we turn it even quieter than that, just for like background TV watching or whatnot. Power on input, I do have it set to the living. That's the only one. I just have it default to that. And then another option about muting the line out. Network remote settings, I've got a fixed IP. The, the network device name can be set here. IP configuration, again, DHCP or a fixed address, all of that's available, as well as RS-232 commands, trigger control. And I do have the trigger set to power, just general power. If the STR is on, the trigger line is high, and these triad amps are on. You can also enable or disable the discrete IR. So I am using the rear IR input for that IR repeater relay, but the front IR I don't use. I just have it disabled. Save load settings. You can save and recall two levels of settings. One they call user, one they call installer. So I do save my settings in the user in case I need to restore them and options to load defaults and then reset what they call on the fly settings as well. And then lastly, whoops, lastly, system info. You can see firmware version here, 1.8.30. Tells you your ARC upload information, name and date, and your MAC address of the unit. So that's the, kind of the entire structure of the Anthem STR. So that's all the main things that I wanted to hit in this video, kind of my impressions, some thoughts, give an overview of the settings and options. Look for another video on the channel that will go into detail. I'm gonna go over the Arc Genesis config, the room custom curve settings and all of that that I put in for this device. And do look back at the video link popping up here if you wanna see kind of my more hands-on unboxing overview where I show off the device and talk a little bit more about what my plans were at the time to integrate it. Awesome device, I love the Anthem stuff. I highly recommend it. I'm super happy with this, the way it's worked, its performance and all of that. Very much recommended. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Happy to answer. And otherwise, please do all the YouTube stuff. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications. Share the video if you would. And thanks for watching. Coming back for more.